welcome to Solo Pro Radio. It's the only resource for self-employed professionals to grow their business. I'm Barbara Saunders, the Solo Pro Business Master, and it's my mission to help solo pros, self-employed professionals, and small businesses to use the power of technology and the Internet to harness what they know to help them grow. I have custom fit programs focused specifically on helping solo pros build lucrative, solo-based businesses in today's technology-driven global economy. Swing on by soloprosuccess.com and pick up your free Income Accelerator Success Kit. I want to welcome my guest today, Cherie Lasota. She is a techno dweeb, (laughs) self-proclaimed, and darn proud of it. She dabbles in video editing, ebook design, coding, gaming, gizmos, gadgets, tablets, and apps. Currently, Cherie is a full-time freelancer focusing on fiction and nonfiction editing, ebooks and print design, web design, and book marketing consulting. She also has just launched Audivox.com, which aims to help listeners discover and win audible audio books. Cherie also has over 24 years of experience writing fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Along with her award-winning debut novel, Artemis Rising, she has published her second novel, Echoes in the Glass, as well as nonfiction and anthologies. Welcome, Cherie. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm excited to chat with you. You know, for our listeners, I've known you for several, several years, and so I've got to watch you evolve and I'm really excited about what you know some of the new things that you've got coming out. And one of the things I want to really point out for our listeners is that that is kind of the model of today's self-employed professional. You evolve and you grow with what's going on in your world and what's going on with the world outside. So uh, you know, let's talk a little bit, you know, about how you came to be in business for yourself. I know it's been kind of in business and then not, and then in, let's talk a little bit about how that came about. Sure. Um, yeah, I, you know, originally back in grade school days, I started out writing, and frankly, I was terrible then. And it took me years to really figure out my writing process and actually get that nailed down. In fact, it was actually not until uh, I ran into National Novel Writing Month, which is an event that happens every November where you crazy people all over the world try and write a 50,000-word novel in one month. That wasn't, in, uh, you know, the first time I ever tried that, I realized um, that I, two things, that I needed to outline that fiction, like basically outline my whole plot before I began, and then also um, that I needed to shut off my internal editor because it was sort of squelching my creativity. Uh, and once I did that, um, it, it just took off, and I started writing constantly, and it's been great on that side of things. And on business side, um, you know, I, I started out, uh, apparently I have a knack for editing. Who knew? So when I was quite young, I started taking on, you know, um, part-time editing jobs and then, uh, you know, editing through school, and I was working for nonprofit um, economic groups and newspapers and all kinds of crazy things, Um, and just honing my skills through the years. And eventually, um, I think around 2004, I started freelancing, um, uh, basically freelance editing. That was my only service at the time, um, as well as my writing, of course. And then I had a friend of mine ask if I would uh, be inclined to help out his church as an administrator because they were really in need at the time. So I was like, okay, sure, I'll take it on part-time. Well, then he asked me if I wanted to be an administrator for his office, which is an engineering firm, and so I got suckered into that. And I stayed there for eight years. Um, And it was very tough being able to, or basically running multiple jobs at the same time. I was writing, I was editing part-time, you know, for for my my own clients, and then working at a full-time day job. Um, and it was extremely stressful at times um, just trying to manage my time for all of those activities. And eventually, just recently, I decided to go full-time um, freelance again. Uh, and so I've just been going crazy with all of my newfound time. <laughs> so I started a new, you know, basically launched another part of my business. Um, in fact, I actually launched that within 
basically I conceived of it, created the website, launched it all within two weeks. Um, so that was pretty insane. <laughs> um, but it's been going well. Um, I basically just have a lot of diversified um, offerings, you know, service-wise for my mm -hmm. clients, and it's really made a difference. Well, I'm interested, and I know our listeners, this is one of their big uh, kind of uh, burning issues. You were employed for a while full-time. What was it that made you want to make, I know you wanted to write, but what was it that gave you the courage to take that leap? and leave the full-time job. Right, yeah, I mean, for a long time, it was, uh, you know, sort of my safety net, you know, it had the nice 401k matching plan and the nice benefits and all that kind of thing. And it was a steady uh, income that I could count on year after year. Um, but with all of the time that it took to do that job, I was really um, not able to handle the stress of that much lack of time and it was starting to have an effect on my health I mean a serious effect on my health like it was just affecting productivity in all areas of my life um, and that was a huge impetus so that was probably the biggest one um, when I was realizing that it was really affecting my health and then also um, I started really taking a look at you know what I had in terms of skill sets and what I had in terms of financial stability. And I realized when I added it all up, I had six months worth of um, emergency funds or safety, uh, or excuse me, um, uh, savings already uh, in the bank. And then also um, I realized that I, over the last 10 years, had acquired a crazy number of new skills. Um, in you know H um, HTML coding and ebook design and web design and all these things that I had sort of learned on the side, I realized that most authors, publishers, um, you know, in in the industries, they, they don't really know all these skills and they can make use of this. So offering even something like book marketing consulting, it shocks me. Uh, how few authors really know how to take advantage of the marketing um, avenues and applications that they can can use to really streamline their business processes. So um, it's been an amazing journey so far, and it's only been like a month. Um, I'm just going full bore, no stops ahead. Just whatever I want to do, I do it because I have the time now for the first time ever in my life. And it's a great, it's just, it's a great feeling. You know, that's really intriguing. You know, I wanted to ask, I love how you talked about the the new skills that you evolved or developed over this period of time that you were actually in corporate America. You know, I wanted to ask, how have things changed? You you touched on it a little bit, you know, back when you first freelanced kind of as an editor and then now, um, with the technology and things, how has what's the difference between back then and now with how you're running your business and how you're looking at coming at business? Well, I guess you might say I'm totally geeking out. Um, I am basically learning all those sort of – to me, there's, there's kind of two camps involved in any kind of business, frankly. There's the geeks and the non-geeks, um, the people who are willing to try something new try a new application, try a new software, learn a new skill. And those are the ones that, uh, on the flip side, that are afraid to try anything new. They don't want to take the time for it. Um, even if they know um, in their gut that it will help them streamline their business or, you know, have better pay or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, so I started really geeking out and just learning everything I could possibly learn. Anything that seemed interesting to me, I started learning more about it, and it's made a huge difference, um, mostly in streamlining um, my business practices and making things faster. Um, everything I do is usually involves some kind of software or app, um, and I spend most of my business time online. Um, you know, I work in the cloud mostly, and um, I rarely do anything on paper. Uh, just because it takes so much more time. So, I mean, I guess that's 
probably the biggest difference between then and now, I would say. You know, I find that so fascinating, and I love that you, you know, kind of called out the difference between the geeks and the non-geeks. That's one mm-hmm. thing that we're really seeing arise from, you know, so many people are starting businesses today, especially age 45 and over. That's like mm-hmm. 80, 85% of the businesses started today are by people in those age groups, and the ones who succeed are the ones who jump in and learn these tools. Yes. You know, and yeah, I'm, and I, I've seen I've seen it in in fact with my clients. The the clients who don't want to learn anything new and they want to have um, you know sort of their hand held the entire way, um, they don't tend to succeed. They don't tend to have a lot of book sales. They don't they don't mark they don't know how to market their books because they don't want to know how. They just want somebody to sort of do it all for them, and that's really not how it works. Um, if you're going into business for yourself, and that's what every author does, um, you have to you have to put in the time. Um, and it's not just about the writing time now. Unfortunately, it used to be 50 years ago that you did have your hand held, but you also made a heck of a lot less money um, too. Because you know, and just in the the writing world, I mean, the difference in revenue is crazy. I know, in fact, I think I just saw this statistic that just came out this morning that said, oh, what was it? It was like 27%. I'm going to see if I can find that. It was just on, um, there's actually a, a place called authorearningsreport.com, I think. And um, it's it's a place where an indie author has basically figured out how to mine uh, Amazon for um, information about who's making the most sales and whatnot. Here it is. Here's the statistic. Self-published authors are just are not just holding their ground with big five authors when it comes to releases after 2011. They are out earning big five authors by a 27% margin. So in other words, oh, indie yeah. authors are doing it. Like they're making a lot of money, um, much more so than a, your standard traditional author. Right, um, you know, and that so, that really intrigues me because your business model is very different from, you know, as an author, it's very different from someone who is providing services. You're mm-hmm. writing books and your books are your products. So yes, you those mind, are my specific products for sure. <laughs> so fascinating to me. Would you mind talking a little bit about that business model and, and you know, how you set it up and how you spend your time each day? Sure. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot to it. Um, when it comes to the writing part of my process, I spend some of my time really learning new um, new applications and new avenues for marketing books. Um, there's, a, there's something coming out every day that's some new service or application or software or whatever um, that makes it easier and easier to um, sell books and market books. Um, so I spend some time doing that. I also spend some time actually writing sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that part is uh, usually the, the um, it's usually lacking on my part, which is a problem. I'm still working on that. Um, but the products themselves, I mean, they can be repackaged. For example, I can write a novel. In fact, I'll just give you an example from my first novel, Artemis Rising. It came out in 2011. I originally released it as an ebook. And then I was basically testing the market then. I did not want to release a paperback until I was sure I knew who my audience was because it's a cross-genre novel and it could fit in a number of categories. So I realized it's more of a historical. It's not as much of a young adult as I assumed it would be. Um, So I then released the paperback, and then that went well. And then I actually just now... um, agreed to put the whole novel in a box set of of collection of novels um, that is for charity um, for World Oceans Day. So that's going to oh. come out, I think, on June 2nd. So that's another way to sort of maximize um, or rather repurpose something I've already worked on. And I, I know that you're a big proponent of that repackaging, uh, reusing. Um, that's okay the products that you already have and just, you know, using them in different ways. So that was one way I could do that with Artemis. And I've actually put a few of my chapters in different anthologies 
Um, so that's another option for me. Um, but the possibilities are really endless. But when it really boils down to it, the best marketing tool for an author is to write another book. That's the number one. Okay. Um, so yeah. you kind of have two sort of aspects to your business. You do your own writing and your own novels that you market, and then mm-hmm. you also help other authors. Is that right? Right, exactly. Um, and it surprises me that I know a lot more than most of the authors I know, and the, and the reason why I know that is because they tell me this. They're like, wow, you spent all that time working and learning how to, say, create an ebook from scratch and design it with HTML coding. Why don't you do that for me kind of thing? So it's become a way for me to make a living um, by basically put, you know, sharing what I know with authors who either don't want to take the time or really don't have the technical skill to, to do it for themselves. Um, and one thing I always want to offer is to show them how to do it themselves so they can handle those tasks in the future on their own. Because I know the more you know, the better, the more power you have, the more money you can make because you can keep the money that you would pay, um, of, you know, Freelance editor, for example, well, right. editing is not the right way to say it, but like, for example, web design or ebook design, because you really can't um, edit yourself. That's, that's the one thing you really can't do. Um, it's, it's just, it's too hard. Um, so it's always best to have an editor, um, some, yeah. somebody, a critique partner, anyone uh, editing your work after you. But, but yeah, uh, when it comes to, you yeah, have to goodness. know the more you know about what needs to be done, the the better you can hire someone to do it for you properly. Yeah, I mean, the more you know about what what is needed, um, you know, like if you have a basic understanding of what makes a good business or excuse me, a book cover in your genre, for example, if you know the general elements, like young adult, they usually have a girl in a beautiful dress on the cover, for example. If you kind of have a sense of what works in your genre or in your niche market, then you know who to ask. You, you know what questions to ask of a potential freelancer who might be working for you, that kind of thing. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And I, 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 so, I so, like, want to underscore what, you, what you're just talking about is because so many, I hear so many people, they hire a designer or a web person and, they, they're frustrated with the outcome because, you know, the person didn't do what they wanted or whatever, but it's because you didn't ask the right question. Very you know, you true. I, yeah, I you know, absolutely you've... agree with you on that one. I've seen that happen on both sides of the coin. I've had that happen where I didn't give enough information about what I was really envisioning for whatever service I needed. Or I've also seen it the other way around where I'm like, actually, you know, trying to push the my client to give me more information so I have a really clear picture of what they what they need. And sometimes they're just like, I don't know, just do whatever and I'm like, No, no, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. You have to be more involved, you have to be more engaged. I need specific details for what you need and I will make I will give you a superior product or service then and we'll both come out really happy with, you know, the results. So yeah, I love I love that you're really pushing that because I think that's such an important point, especially for self-employed professionals to understand that you've got to be driving the bus. You wouldn't go to a, a restaurant and say, you know, just surprise me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll know what I want when I say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, I went to a re- restaurant last year on my honeymoon, no less, um, oh, okay. And there was there was a menu item um, that basically said the chef will will decide for you, and I'm like, no, 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 that would just freak <laughs> me out. I just can't handle that. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a control freak even when I'm ordering from a restaurant. Who knew? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, there is something to be said about being a control freak. If you are, um, you know, a self-employed professional. To some degree, you need to kind of embrace that side of yourself because you do call the shots. You are the boss. You can make those decisions, unlike before when you were, you know, basically told what to do and and you better like it. (laughs) Um, You know, the chips will fall where they may. I mean, there's always risk involved in every opportunity. Um, I mean, 
with every book I write, it could be a total flop, or every business I, you know, I launch, it could, you know, backfire. But you know, with no risk, there's no reward. So you have to kind of just do your best in terms of um, understanding your market, doing doing the legwork to really set it up properly. You know, a website that's in the, that's in the really nav, you know easy to navigate. That, in fact, that's what I was just working on with my Autovox venture. I had a beta test in the last week, and everything that anyone was confused about, anything that anyone asked a question about, I addressed it and fixed it on the website to ensure that that question won't come up again. And that's the thing. You you can do all this, sort of, and the work, you can put all kinds of work into something, but if you don't have an analysis in the back end of things, if you don't really pay attention to your book sales and figure out where are the book sales coming from, where are my customers from, um, or you know, what, what's working and what's not, what are people asking the most questions about. If you don't put in that work, then you're really not going to have a superior product and people are not going to keep coming back to you. You know, I love that. I love that advice for our listeners because it's so true that, you know, we tend to kind of be in our own head a lot of times and we think, oh, well, that makes sense to me, so I'm going to run sure. with it. Other people don't aren't in your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. But yeah, you know, that's really smart. Let's talk about your new business venture. And it's it's audavox.com, right? A U D A V O X X.com. Correct. How did yes. that come about? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, that actually was born out of a um I started a group basically it's called the, the Author Mastermind Group. And this was an idea where um I got this group together because they were from a couple of different marketing groups of mine, but they were from different genres. And I was like, I want more input from different kinds of authors. So let's shove them all together and start thinking out loud. Um, so we had, you know, several um, sort of hour long discussions. In fact, I think the first one was like three hours um, where we really just threw ideas out and just, decided on or on specific topics related to book marketing and one of them was specifically on audiobooks because we both we all realized there's almost nothing out there to help us market our audiobooks and two of my books are going to be coming out next month and I'm like well what do I use like how do I advertise like you know there's nothing there's absolutely not it shocked me to know that there's like a billion of these types of things for ebooks but nothing for audiobooks so I was like, well, okay, I'll just do it myself then. So I, I basically brainstormed um, with a few of my mentors and this uh, author brain trust group, and we came up with some ideas. And then this one just popped in my head out of nowhere. I was like, well, there's there's email newsletter services for ebooks. Well, why not for audiobooks? So that's kind of how it was born. And then I just put a lot of work and research into creating a website that would really be um, sort of easy to navigate, and it's it, it's a place where the authors can go to place an ad in my newsletters, and it's going to be a weekly newsletter, um, so that it doesn't take up an insane amount of my time. Because I had to balance that with my writing time too. So you know, I wanted it to give me a steady income, but also leave me time to work with my clients and you know write and whatever else I needed to do. So um, I built I built that into the process. That idea of I want to create backend processes that allow me to streamline it to the point where I only have you know a specific number of hours that I have to work on that project, and then I can move on to the next. So um, it's been great. The, it, it shocks me how news has spread so fast um, among authors and listeners. It seems like there's a huge need for it, and I've got some USA Today and New York Times best-selling authors who are involved now in um, placing ads because they realize there really is nothing out there. So they're wanting this to succeed, and that, that is a real relief. Cause, you know, when you first start something, you don't really know how people are going to take it. So right, so you see a need out there now. Who gets the newsletters? that you um that you send out 
basically anyone who has ever thought it out or whoever um, listens to Audible um, audiobooks. Audible.com is this, you know, it's been out for a while, um, and it's actually an Amazon company. They bought they bought out um, Audible recently. And so it's a place where you can you can actually just download the Audible app on any device, like an iPhone or um, a tablet or whatever, and you can basically have an audiobook, you know, that you stream. Um, it's actually yours. You buy it instead of like you instead of like ebooks where you read. Um, you actually buy it, and uh, and then you download it, and you can listen to say you know a whole audiobook on your drive down to Florida or something. Or I listen everywhere. I listen while I'm doing chores at the house, while I'm on walks, um, when I'm commuting to different places. Um, I love it. It's so effortless to listen to a whole book. Because sometimes I don't have time to read. um, But I can listen when there's, you know, when I'm doing things that, you know, with my hands that I don't have time for otherwise. That's a great idea, yeah. Or when you're driving or traveling. Sure. Yeah, and then too, there's also a lot of like self-help books out there on Audible. There's business books. There's marketing books, so you can learn not just read fiction, but you can also learn while you're on the go, which is nice. So you know, I, I a, love them. <laughs> that's actually a really, um, you know, I could see a lot of business owners being interested. Exactly. Because they could, yes. you know, get some exposure for their business books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically any any book that is on uh, available on Audible or iTunes can be participate in this Audivox email newsletter, either as a subscriber, um, listener, or as an author who wants to sort of place an ad for their book. And it's not just authors either. It's publishers and narrators. Narrators also have the opportunity to either advertise themselves um, or they're the books that they narrate, which is nice because I know that they have zero places to market themselves in this process. That's where because like a voiceover nothing. person or a, a, a reader could go and, and put their services in and get picked up by an author or something. Yeah, with Audible, it's a fascinating process. Um, the back-end company that actually creates these audio books that go up on Audible is actually called ACX.com. And if you're an author out there and you don't have your book up on ACX.com, you're crazy <laughs> because it's really effortless on your part. If you already have the book created and written, you just right. need to go and sign up for ACX, start looking for a narrator, or they can find you. Basically, there's two options. Either a narrator will audition for you out of the blue, or you go and find a narrator and say, will you audition for me? And then the process goes on from there. And most of the hard work is done on your part. It's the uh, narrator who has all the work to do. And it's not – you can do it two ways. You can do a royalty share with the narrator, which means neither you nor the narrator have upfront costs involved in creating the audiobook. Uh, Or you can pay them by the hour, and that gets more expensive. However, you're free to do what you want with the book. Uh, in other words, you don't have to royalty share with that narrator. You just pay him a set fee at the beginning, and you're done. Okay. So there's now, so does fees. it kind of work like, um, you know, like the iTunes Store where people buy it through buy the actual finished recorded book through, yes. you know, and they pay their little fee there and download it. Have yes, you- um, it, it's it works the same on iTunes or Audible. Um, in other words, the, the listener would or the potential buyer would go and find a book they want to buy and they would just simply buy it. And it can be anywhere from a couple dollars all the way up to 30 bucks, depending on how long the audiobook is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, then they just download it. It goes directly to their Audible or iTunes app and then they just hit play and they're done and start listening. So it's a very cool process, and I got really excited about it when I learned more about it. So it's definitely worth looking into because if you're an author, you will realize that for every audiobook sale, you get more in revenue per sale than you would for an ebook because ebooks are far less expensive. You know, that so, is really fascinating. What a great business model. Yes, for sure. And then for the Audivox newsletter, authors can do two things. They can either um, advertise their basic 
uh, you know, audiobook title, you know, just as it is, or they can give away um, or they can offer up one of their um, giveaway coupons because ACX offers up both narrators and authors 25 free giveaway coupons to give away for promotional material. So you're, you know, the author could offer up one of these coupons in one of my contests on my, in my newsletter. And that's another way for them to get the word out about their books um, and to offer up something free to their readership. So it's very cool. Um, yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been really popular so far. People are really signing up for it pretty fast. So. Yeah, I'm really excited for you. It sounds like this is a kind of a whole new area. The, the audio books already exist, but you're creating kind of like the, the pass-through or the, the right. kind of middle piece that gets people... Let's yeah, currently there's it. only... The only way to really look for audio books is um, through audible.com itself. And, you know, with eBooks, there's all kinds of other avenues. I mean, I'm probably yeah. going to expand my service at some point and have, like, blog posts that are devoted to, you know, marketing audio books, maybe some narrator spot spotlights, author spotlights. Um, you know, maybe they're, somebody's offering a huge sale. Um, because one of the biggest problems with audio books is that you can't really put your audio book on sale like you can an eBook. Um, so... I hope that changes in the future, but until then, you can either, off, you know, at least share, you know, you know, your actual book um, with a new readership that might not see it otherwise, or um, offer up a giveaway coupon. So either way, you're going to get the word out about your book. Well, so actually, great. you know, that's really exciting. I can see many ways that you can monetize this new service. It's really kind of an exciting new business model. Good for you. Yes, it is really. And I've got some things coming up around Audivox. Um, would you like to share with that with us? Oh, sure. Um, yes, the, the actual newsletter itself um, launches on May 30th. So right now I'm still taking um, ad slots for – I'm actually taking ad slots for any time between now – or well, basically between May 30th and the end of the year, December 31st. Um, and all – if if you order now – all ad slots are free um, okay. uh, up until Thursday. Thursday is my cutoff day for the free ads. Um, it's kind of a way to say, hey, give it a try. It's worth a shot. It's free. Why not? Um, now you have to then, have a few book up yes. in order to get an ad, right? Right. If you have a book up on Audible or iTunes, um, then you're eligible to give this a try. Um, and then um, what was I going to say? Uh, the other thing is that if you want to sign up as a subscriber, if you listen to audiobooks and you're interested in, say, trying to win some of these giveaway coupons from best-selling authors, you just need to go to audivox.com um, and sign up for the new to receive the newsletter. And you can sign up for any genre you want. There's all kinds of stuff like general fiction, nonfiction, romance, sci-fi, all this kind of thing. So it's oh, um, and that's really auto A U D A. V O X X. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Com. And I understand you've got you're doing some workshops. Uh, yes, I am. Um, they are. Um, I'm doing a few actually. Um, there's a new conference. Actually, I'll tell you about both of them because this is a really amazing thing. Um, I was not a founder, but part of the team that started um, IndieRecon.org. And it's basically a completely free writing conference, uh, and, and it's all online. So you can show up anytime. You don't even have to be there for the entire thing. You can just go and read all of the information after the fact. You work all day, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and it, it's been an amazing experience. It's only been around for two years. And um, we've had some amazing big-name authors and industry people involved in it. And they basically are just offering up their time for free um, just so to, to teach other authors, you know, the best practices for writing and the business side and the marketing side and everything else. So it's, it's been amazing. So that's coming up. We just had one, so it's probably going to be another one in February or March next year. Okay. But, up, upcoming is October 10th and 11th 
there is actually the live version of Indie Recon. Um, and that's going to be in Sandy, Utah, which is right outside Salt Lake. And I think there's actually a shuttle from the airport to the hotel where it's going to be at. And it's uh, called IndieReconLive.com. And I'll be teaching a, a two-part workshop on ebook design um, at that conference. And it's sort of a way for us. People kept asking us, "Where are you going to have something in real life? We'd like to actually meet you guys in person and, you know, communicate in person." So they finally decided this year to take the plunge and do a live event, and it's a two-day conference, and that's going to be amazing, good fun. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, and then the other conference I'm attending is the Lamet Writers Conference here in Portland, Oregon, and that's August 1st through the 3rd. And I will be, I guess I'm going to be a pro expert available for answering questions. I'm not sure exactly how it's set up yet because I have, this is a new thing that they're doing. And I'm also going to be um, participating in the manuscript ER area where people can okay. come and ask questions about their manuscripts. So I'll be helping out with that. Um, so, yeah, if anybody wants to come say hi, feel free. <laughs> Excellent. And they can would now would you have information about those both those events up on the website? I should. I I probably ought to. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a chance yet. <laughs> More info. But yes, I in fact I'll probably do that today so I have that ready uh in the next hour. Um so that I have that available for anybody who needs to look at it. And you can you'll be you'll be able to find it on Sharielasota dot com. Um, that's my author website. Excellent. That's um, Cherie, C-H-E-R-I, Lasota, L-A-S-O-T-A, dot com. Right, exactly. Make sure our people can uh, find you. Um, and, and tell us a little bit about, I know you've got the existing book, Artemis Rising, and your new book, Echoes in Glass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are actually out as e-books. Uh, and then Artemis is actually out of the paperback, but um, they're both coming out soon on uh, Audible um, as audio books, and I'm really excited about that. I guess they'll be available on iTunes as well. Um, so I'm still knee deep in the middle of that process, uh, working with my narrators to get you know character accents right and and all the details worked out for that. But it's been an amazing, fun process, and I I can't wait to write another book just so I can go through this process all over again. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. insane to hear your characters come to life in like audio form. It's just crazy. The first time I heard it, it was just I just had a huge smile on my face. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> uh, so with with um, they do the accents and everything for your characters. Mm-hmm. Yes, they can or or not, depending on kind of what you want to do with the story. Um, so it's it's really up to you, and you can choose. Um, narrators who are good at specific accents, um, you know, for example, somebody who's good at a British British accent who are like characters that are, you know, in England or whatever, something like that. Um, but there's so many talented um, narrators out there. It's, it's um, amazing to see them work and how how the process works for them. It's kind of fun to see that whole, whole other side of it. Well, I really, you know, you've really kind of brought to light um, a couple of really different business model and business concepts that we really haven't talked a lot about here on Solo Pro. And, you know, as a as a writer, that this whole concept of being a narrator, I mean, that just fascinates mm-hmm. me. You know? Yeah, I, I was totally fascinated when I first learned about it, um, just the whole process of how it works on their end of things, because it is a different medium completely. Um, so, and we're just, you know, as writers, we're used to the written word, and it's a whole new ball game with this. So. Right. Well, well, kudos to you, and good luck with Audivox. Again, I'm going to spell it for our listeners. It's a u d a v o x x dot com, and you know, I'm going to encourage you to just jump over there and check it out. Even if you're thinking about, you know, I know we've got a lot of writers who are our listeners. So, you know, I think that's really great. And then you also have your own website, com, where they can maybe hook up with you um, 
how would someone contact you, say, if they'd like to take one of your classes or work with you in marketing their book? Oh, yes. That would probably be on my sharilasoda.com website. Um, you can click on the Hire Me um, tab at the top, and it will show you basically what my services are and how to get in contact with me and that kind of thing. So, yeah, they can feel free to give me a shout, and if they need any uh, questions answered, I'm available. Well, excellent. I, I really appreciate your being a guest today, Sheree. And, you know, I love that you're kind of bringing exposure to this entirely kind of new area of, mm -hmm. of business that people can, can find some success in. I know writers tend to struggle, so I think you're throwing them a great life, you know, preserver there. <laughs> Yes, I, well, I hope so. I mean, that's the idea is to make it easier for listeners to, to find audiobooks and also the authors to, to market their audiobooks because there's yeah. just so little available to them in that regard for, for marketing and promotion. It's really kind of sad. <laughs> and it's a great area to grow in and to start your business, so kudos for you. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Well, it's a kick. I mean, it's just fascinating to see what you've got going on. So, great. <laughs> Listeners, I want to remind you that you've been listening to Solo Pro Radio. Our guest today has been Sheree Lasota, and we've been talking a little bit about how uh, fiction and nonfiction authors can get their their books and their audio books to market, and Sheree Lasota is the person that can help you. And again, I want you to go to Audavox, that's A-U-D-A-V-O-X-X dot com, and check out her new newsletter. Wonderful. Um, any Thank last you. Thing, shots to our listeners, Sheree? Um, you know, I think really it boils down to um, if you've been considering, you know, being an entrepreneur and taking the plunge, you know, just a few final thoughts on that. Um, before you do, try to focus um, the most on um, building your processes at, on the front end of things so that at the back end you start making money and you start having more time for what you need to do. So make sure you have that savings fund um, to you know, guard against those feast or famine problems that always occur with freelancing. And um, you know, diversify your product and service offerings. Think about ways that you can sort of add to your services or build new products um, and offer those up as well. And then make sure you have enough startup cost funds, you know. Um, it, it's always, you don't want to be surprised when you have to, say, buy a new laptop or a new printer. You have to really build that into your revenue projections. And that's the other thing. Project your revenue and find out, you know, what a service or product is really going to make for you over the long term and make sure that the time involved in it is really worth the risk and time. So that's Basically, my parting thoughts for you, for your audience. No, those are brilliant. You know, it's the it's the business end that we kind of have mm -hmm. to concentrate on a lot of times. So, thank you sure. so much for sharing those little bits of wisdom with us. And again, this is Solo Pro Radio. It's Barbara, the Solo Pro Business Master, and I'm going to say bye bye for now. Okay, thank you. Great.